Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Sibanda. So you suggest that this speaks to the rather unequal relationship between China and Africa? Indeed it is. I mean, um, I think it's very sad because uh, you will acknowledge the fact that, you know, COVID-19 started in China. And um, at that stage, it was just treated and everybody looked at any other, you know, uh, infection or disease. But we have not seen, you know, Africa, for example, you know, ill-treating the Chinese people. Even here in South Africa, you know, the Chinese people are actually more comfortable. It was actually other Chinese people that were a bit unhappy about those that were coming from China. So I think that kind of relationship and the mere fact that we can have the mayor coming up, you know, saying people are saying, I mean, some, some fake or false information is just unacceptable because we've seen video footage. I mean, we see that a lot of Africans are actually sleeping outside and on the streets and the police are not doing anything to try and stop that. So that is definitely unacceptable. And it actually speaks volumes about how Africa, you know, treats, I mean, rather China, you know, treats Africans and views the relationship between China and Africa. Uh, we've seen uh, ambassadors in China come out to condemn this. We've also heard from the chairperson of the African Union Commission, Mr. Musa Faki. Um, is this condemnation from these voices enough for you? I don't think that it, we, we can just, you know, take it uh, and leave it at the condemnation. We really need to see action, you know, being taken against, you know, China. And we need China to, 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 to account and to give a proper account as to why, you know, that would have been allowed to happen. Because we've had, you know, uh, families that went to the police station and the police have not been able to help them. And then just, you know, condemning it without, you know, commensurate action, you know, to see that, you know, uh, this stops forthwith and probably a proper apology, you know, is given to the the, you know, uh, African people in terms of this kind of treatment is unacceptable, considering the fact that, you know what, Africa has such, you know, bilateral relations and, 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 and so many interests in Africa. I mean, I think that, you know, there are certain things that we should not just leave, you know, to uh, just, you know, uh, pep talk or talk that goes on media without real, you know, uh, serious steps being taken against such uh, actions, especially considering the size of China and the size of Chinese investment in Africa. I think something serious needs to come from that. You talk about uh, bilateral agreements, and in your statement you say China naturally has become the colonizer of Africa today, and of course in a more subtle way in that this is done in the name of aid and bilateral agreements. Uh, what do you say to somebody that says, well, is this really the fault of China, or would people find themselves in a situation that they are far from home if leadership at home was correct? Well, yes, true. I mean, the issue of leadership is obviously going to come into question to say, but what is the leadership, African leadership doing? So, you know, in order to facilitate to ensure that these agreements are taking place. But to start with, we're also looking at, you know, the, 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 the human rights factor and aspect of it to say that, you know, I mean, the, the, the people of Chinese would have known that they've got so much interest in Africa and would have naturally treated Africans, you know, in a much better way. I mean, I, I think, you know, when we look at uh, the statement that, you know, the, in a subtle way, you know, China has colonized Africa, I, I think it's, it's, it's actually like us. I mean, I'm say, I say it, that we're putting it quite mildly because we've seen that a lot of African countries, you know, as we speak today, they are under, you know, Chinese influence or, you know, some sort of, you know, aid that is seen to be coming from China. But the truth of the matter, we know that China is not worried about the African people. It is basically extending its investment, it is creating employment for the people of China. And at the end of the day, you know, we know that here at home, not talking about, you know, a much further, you know, a field, here at home in South Africa, we've had a lot of, you know, problems when it comes to counterfeit products and contraband, you know, where a lot of, you know, informal traders have been arrested. And the bulk of those products are coming from China. And China keeps shipping all that into, 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 into the shores of the country. And only the people at the receiving end are the ones that, you know, at the end of the day have got to pay for that. So the brutality with which, you know, Africa is doing, I mean, China is doing its business is of great concern. And we know that even if, you know, President Trump said that, you know, or they've got a problem with China, that it does not real affect, you know, that, that relationship or those fallouts are not of much effect because, you know, the, the, the trade agreements or the benefit that China has from uh, America is not as big as the benefit that China has from Africa. And therefore, we must refuse and resist the kind of treatment that really, you know, negates or denigrates, you know, the African people. You talk about um, Donald Trump. He's always maintained uh, making America great again. He does what he needs to do for America. Is China not doing what it needs to do and taking the responsibility upon itself to protect uh, its territories against a further outbreak? 
Well, very true. I mean, you know, China has a responsibility to protect the further outbreak, you know, against, uh, obviously, I mean, uh, they, they, they are a further, you know, a reinfection or outbreak. But we, as the people of Africa, are standing up and saying, look, we're not going to allow that, you know, to dehumanize the African people, considering that the African people, as we are speaking right now, you know, are the people that have seen, you know, um, uh, China, you know, grow in such a way in terms of its economy. Because we are also saying that, you know, we want to see Africa in a way taking responsibility, you know, um, to help, you know, Africa, especially Africa sitting, you know, as a developing country, considering that, you know, uh, the COVID came from, 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 from China or the first outbreak was from China. We don't know. I mean, we've heard about, you know, the animals, how it actually broke out and all that. But we feel that China, having, you know, benefited so much from Africa, it has a social responsibility to stand up and come into Africa and ensure that, you know, whatever means that Africa, I mean, China did, to stop the spread, it must quickly bring it here because, you know, it benefits a lot from Africa. So, yes, you know, um, the, 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 the Donald Trump is, President Trump is doing what he's doing for the, for the uh, American people and the Chinese are. And we as Africans are saying we will not stand and allow the Chinese people, you know, either through their governments or in the streets, you know, to victimize the African people. We are also standing up equally and probably toe to toe, you know, to China to say we will not tolerate this and we cannot tolerate it. And it's very unfortunate that now we're talking, it's quite diplomatic, but if it continues, you know, this way, we might see actually the people of Africa starting to fight back and starting to push the so many millions of Chinese people that live in Africa, which we really don't want and would regret to see happening. Vosmuzi Sibanda, thank you very much, sir. He's the chairperson of the Africa Diaspora.